Is your aquarium water more like dirty bath water than the nice, clear water of the Caribbean? When you look at your fish, do you have to wait for them to come to the front to see them because the water is just so cloudy? Well, maybe and hopefully yours isn't that bad, but you may still be a few degrees shy of that crystalline water you've seen in other aquariums like mine. You know what I mean, where it actually looks like they're floating in air. Well, I'm gonna help you get there by giving you five easy tips to get crystal clear water. If you wear glasses, you know what it's like when you've been out in a dust storm or something has splashed all over the lenses. It's hard to see. It may be nice and sunny, but when you look through those defiled glasses, you can't see a thing. There's too much stuff on those lenses to get a nice clear look at anything. I just will rub dirt in my eyes. So you just wash them off and just like magic, you can see everything again. Well, your aquarium panels are the same way. You may have the cleanest water around, but you'd never know it because you're looking through too much dust, smudges, film, or anything else that's stuck to those panels. So the first thing you need to do is wipe those babies down. Start with the outside panels. You can use regular glass cleaners like Windex as long as you're careful not to get any inside the tank. I mean, not even a speck can contaminate that water. So spray your cloth away from the tank and then approach the aquarium and wipe it down. If you have an acrylic aquarium, then never use glass cleaners or alcohol to clean those panels or they will permanently cloud the acrylic. Always use a cleaner designed specifically for acrylic. I use Brilliant Eyes, a product I ordered from Amazon. Away from the tank, I spray some directly to the microfiber cloth and then wipe the panels with it. Before it dries, I buff it with the other side of the cloth. It gets it amazingly clear. A terrific idea is also to use an aquarium safe cleaner like Fritz Aquarium Glass and Acrylic Cleaner. That way, if some were to accidentally get into the water, it won't be a total disaster. While you're taking care of those viewing panels, if you have a glass or acrylic lid, it's a good idea to clean those too. You're going to get mineral deposits, film, and maybe algae there, and then your aquarium light won't be lighting the tank at full strength. It could also cause the light to be tinted. For instance, if you have algae on there, it could make the light appear greenish. I don't ever use any cleaners on the lids since they are likely to contaminate the water. I just wipe them down with water in a soft cloth or magic eraser. Next, you need to clean the inside panels as well. If you have algae, it's easy to tell that there's a problem, but sometimes it isn't as obvious. The inside panels can get a film on them that is just slightly opaque. It looks milky white and is often only noticeable if you view the panel from behind it and to the side. If you want to see if you have film on the front panel, just look at the side panel back at the front panel. You can use a glass algae cleaner for glass tanks, but for my acrylic, I don't use anything designed for acrylic aquariums. I found that acrylic scratches incredibly easy and even products that are not supposed to scratch the panels do scratch them when any significant pressure is used. So I use a somewhat controversial item, the Magic Eraser or the generic brand, and only the original Magic Eraser, not anything with a scent added to it. They may smell good to you, but your fish won't be able to smell them for long because they'll all be dead. What have I done now? This is just melamine, which is not bad for the fish unless little pieces of it break off and the fish eat them. So to avoid this, I only use the pad a few times and then throw it away before it begins to deteriorate. I also use very little pressure, letting the pad just glide across the panels. This takes care of the film and any small amounts of algae buildup. I am very careful to store this where nothing will contaminate the pad between cleanings. Now if your water is clear, you'll be able to see it. If it isn't clear, then you have some more work to do. This next one is a really common one. Almost all newbies do it every day. It's one of the most fun things you can do with your fish, so it's no wonder why we all wanna do it all the time. But feeding your fish too much is much more serious than it sounds. With you overfeeding them all the time, they're gonna get fat and lazy. They're just gonna sit around waiting for the great hand to come out of nowhere again and dump way too much food in their house. Then they're going to lose all ambition, start drinking and smoking, quit their jobs, become a burden to all their fish mates, and finally lose all potential to be a positive part of society. Of course, if you have African cichlids, your fish are probably that way already. 
They're also going to poop a heck of a lot more, which means there will be more pieces of poop floating around, and since fish evidently aren't smart enough to tell poop from food, each fish will have to try to eat, sometimes several times, each piece before it finally hits your filter. Now this extra fish waste, along with any uneaten food, is going to increase your nitrates and cloud the water. Plus the extra waste is going to clog up those filters, making them less efficient, which will eventually cloud it up too. It just isn't worth it, man. So you might be wondering how much to feed them. I mean, when is it too much? Just feed what can be eaten in about a minute. After that, you're going to regret it. If there's food lying around after a minute, then cut back. You can do this two or maybe even three times a day. Of course, if you have tiny tetras, they're going to eat much less than a bunch of full-grown, ravenous African cichlids, which nearly rip your fingers off trying to get to their pellets. So the amount you feed will vary based on the stocking levels and types of fish you have. Next time you want to overfeed your fish, just give your evil hand a hard slap and do the right thing. And speaking of doing the right thing, if you've enjoyed this video so far, hit the like and subscribe. Maybe you just added new substrate to your tank and now the water looks more like milk than that crystal clear water you're after. Unless your substrate is pre-washed and is already loaded with beneficial bacteria, then you should rinse your substrate before adding it to the tank. If you don't, you'll be surprised at how cloudy that water will get in just seconds and it'll take days to clear it up. There are some substrates that advertise that they have live bacteria in the bag. And if you rinse them before adding them, you'll lose that bacteria down the drain. So don't rinse those. Everything else, rinse. And when I say rinse, I'm not talking about a light rinse. This is gonna take a while. Fill an aquarium safe bucket about halfway with the new substrate and then add water from the bathtub or preferably outside with the hose. Sift the substrate around and pour out all the hazy water that appears. Add more and repeat. You're gonna be here a while, so pack a lunch. And some substrates are worse than others. Keep doing this until after sifting through the sand, your water is crystal clear. And if you do this, you'll add it to your water and it'll look great. If not immediately, then within an hour or two, as long as you have adequate filtration. If you skip rinsing your substrate, don't expect to see much of your fish for quite a while. This next one is easy to fix. Air stones can be great for surface agitation, keeping your water well oxygenated for your fish. Contrary to common belief, it isn't the bubbles themselves that oxygenate the water. It's the popping of them once they reach the surface. This agitates the surface of the water, which helps with the exchange of gases. Carbon dioxide will leave your water and oxygen is going to be introduced to it, giving your fish what they need most. Plus, many think these bubbles add a pleasing aesthetic to your tank if done correctly. Sponge filters, while not as aesthetic as air stones, also add bubbles while doing a pretty good job of filtering your water. Anything that makes bubbles can cause a new fish keeper a lot of frustration though, because all of a sudden, they may notice that after adding it, the water gets hazy. And it'll be really difficult to tell, but what might be causing this haze are thousands of tiny micro bubbles floating around the tank. A few of these aren't much of a problem, but when there are tons of them, it really clouds the water up and they are so small that you may not even notice that they are actually micro bubbles instead of particles of something else. The solution to this just takes a moment. You probably have your bubble maker close to a filter intake or a filter output. The bubbles are being sucked up through the intake and then splashed back into the water and blown around the tank. Or they are floating to the top right in front of the output, which again, just blows them all over. Simply move it so that it's about four inches away from the intake or put it behind the output and your problem should be solved. If you have micro bubbles and no air stones or sponge filters, then perhaps your filter output is too high in the tank and it's causing too much turbulence at the top of the water. This will do the same thing as the air stones. Either put more water in or lower the output and it should take care of it. There are many other reasons your aquarium water may be cloudy. And the last one for today is actually, and this is going to be difficult to hear, but it's you. Not me. Not doing your water changes. It's okay to be lazy with some things. Not doing the dishes after dinner, skipping a day mowing the lawn, but your fish are counting on you and their lives depend on you doing your job. And so does your water clarity. So don't be lazy. You tired too? Get up and do your scheduled water change even if you don't feel like it. 
Every tank is going to need its own schedule based on how quickly those nitrates build up. But once you test your water and come up with a schedule, stick to it. Nitrates are going to cloud up your water by feeding algae and possibly causing a bacterial or algae bloom, giving your water a milky or colored haze. A little algae can be a sign that your tank is healthy, but too much means there's a problem. If you have a planted tank, this will help keep your nitrates down, but for the most part, the main component to keeping those nitrates down is you doing those water changes. Me, 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 me! I recommend at least 25% per week, but test the water for nitrates afterward using the API Master Test Kit. Get those nitrates down to at least 10 parts per million or so. You may need to take more water out to get there. Be sure to treat the new water with Seachem Prime or another water conditioner to remove chlorine and chlorides. Then test again after a week. You want to keep your nitrates at 40 parts per million or lower, so you may need to do water changes more often or less frequently. But even if your nitrates aren't bad after a couple of weeks, I would still do a water change just to add more minerals to the water, which help replenish the minerals that have been depleted. Your fish need those minerals to remain healthy, and we all want our babies to be healthy. So keep up on your water changes, and you'll feel great about taking one more step to getting your fish to look like they're floating in air. Check out this video on things you might be doing that are actually killing your fish. As always, you've been watching the Cichlid Charmer. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.